Hi, my name's Robin Moffat and I'm a developer advocate at Confluent. Now, transportation is a really interesting source of events. Whether we're talking about planes or trains or automobiles, there's always an element of something having happened at a certain time and usually a bunch of attributes to do with what actually happened. And today I want to talk about using ships as an example of a source of events. Now most ships at sea have these AIS devices attached to them which report, uh, which broadcast information about where the ship is and where it's going and the speed at which it's going and all sorts of stuff like that. So you can buy AIS receivers and actually hook it up to a, a dedicated device or to your computer to receive this data. But there's also the Norwegian Coastal Authority who kindly make available for free a source of AIS data to do with vessels around the Norwegian coastline. So it means you can actually start to look at where the different ships are and where they're going and look for patterns within it. And in this talk, I want to show you how we can capture that data how you can process it as a stream and show you a couple of really interesting examples of what you can actually do with it. So building out some analysis around it and visualizing it on a dashboard and stuff going places makes for some great visualizations like you can see here, but also looking at how we can actually apply some pattern matching to those streams of data to be able to detect pattern matches in real time. So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to pull this data into Kafka using the stream of data that we get from this AAS feed. So if you hook up to it directly, it's a TCP feed and you can use Netcat to get at it, which just gives you this kind of like garbled stream of data. So we pipe it through the GPSD package, which provides the GPSD codes command line. And you can use standard in to pipe the data through that, which then outputs it as JSON. So with the JSON, you then get a nicely formed body of message, which you can see the types of data that we're actually going to get through in this information. Because we want to capture the data into Kafka, we're going to provision ourselves a Kafka cluster. I'm using Kafka, uh, Confluent Cloud here because it's easier. I don't have to run it myself. Someone else runs it and manages it for me. We'll create ourselves some API keys as well so we can get the data in and out. And this is what we're going to do to start with. We're going to pipe the data from Netcat through GPSD code and then into a Kafka cat so as to be able to put that data into a Kafka topic. So to put the data into the Kafka topic, we'll sign into Confluent Cloud, we'll create ourselves a topic into which to put it and then pipe that data through using Kafka cat to stream the data from Netcat through GPSD code and then onto an, to our topic in uh, Confluent Cloud. With the data in Confluent Cloud, you can then uh, see it using the Confluent interface and we can see the data that's in there at the moment. You've just got the kind of like that raw JSON payload that we saw on the command line previously, but now streaming into a Kafka topic. So we've got a live feed of AIS data provided by the Norwegian Coastal Authority. We're streaming that into a Kafka topic and now we can start to use that data in real time to do stuff. If we have a look at the data within it, we can see that single stream of data has got multiple message types. So the third field down on both sides here is the message type identifier. On the left hand side, we've got type five messages and these are attributes of the ship. It's call sign, it's type and so on. On the right hand side is message type one and there's about 30 types in total but here's just two of them. Message type one is one of the most common ones and it's something about what the ship is doing. So the speed, it's heading, uh, it's latitude, longitude, so that kind of really useful information. So within this single stream of data we've got multiple different types of information. So what we're going to do is we're going to split that stream of data, that single stream of data into multiple different streams. We're going to route the different types into different streams so we can then handle those messages accordingly because the processing we want to apply to one of those types isn't always going to be the same processing that we want to apply to a different one. So here's a, an, a conceptual idea of what we've actually got. We've got this data coming in from the different vessels. We've got a bunch of different types within that stream. And we can use ksql db to split that stream out into separate topics. So we've got ksql db, it's running on Confluent Cloud here. And to start off with, we simply declare a ksql db stream on top of that Kafka topic. We declare the uh, entire schema as a single varchar field. So all of the messages just end up in this single field, this single varchar. And if we query the stream, we can then see the contents of it as that data arrives, and we just get to see each of those JSON messages. 
So there's no schema being applied to it yet, other than just saying it's like one great big long varchar. What we'll do in the next step is be able to split out those particular uh, schemas for each different message type by extracting the JSON fields. So let's take this uh, combined stream of message types and route it into the separate uh, streams. So to start off with, we're going to take the data from message type one, and we're going to stream that into its own dedicated topic. So we create a stream just for those particular messages. We're going to store it as Avro, uh, so serializing it like that with a schema registry to store the schema. And then we extract the JSON fields appropriate for the particular schema for that message type. It's all documented on a wiki somewhere. Select those particular fields. We're going to alias them using as to actually declare the schema. We've got the data types also that we're declaring there. So we're going to end up with this nice schema that we've built around the data reflecting the actual schema that's um, supplied as part of that data um, in the documentation. We pull it from that raw stream and then we apply a predicate based on the message type. So message types 1, 2, 3, 18 and 27 all share the same schema. So we'll pull that out into the same stream. We're going to partition it based on the ship's identifier, the MMSI. We set the offset reset to the earliest. So now we're going to process all of those messages in the existing AIS topic and every single new one as it arrives. So we get this new stream of uh, message type one, two, three, and so on in this new stream that's continually updated every time we receive new messages. We can go and look at this. We can see the schema that's been created there. As we declared it, you've got MMSI, which is a string. You've got all the other different data types. And we can also use data lineage view within Confluence to actually start to visualize the kind of pipeline that we're building out here. You've got the raw data arriving into the AIS topic, and then we're splitting some of those messages out into a new topic via that case equal DB query. So now that we've done message types one, let's pick up another message type. Now we're going to look at message type five. These are the attributes about a ship that it will periodically report, again on that same raw AIS stream. But these attributes are things like the ship's call sign, its destination, um, its measurements, and things like that. So some of these things will change. So like its call sign probably won't change. Its destination may well change periodically. So we're going to create ourselves a stream because it starts off as an event stream called message type five. Again, we're serializing it as Avro. Uh, we filter on the predicate for message type five, pull it in from that AAS raw stream, and again, extracting those individual JSON fields appropriate for the schema, and again, partitioning it, setting the message key based on the ship identifier, the MMSI, which is this, this common key that we have between them. Once that stream has been created, the next step will be to actually go and build a table on top of it. So KSQL DB has this concept of streams, which is just an immutable unbounded series of events, and tables, which is value for a given key. So now we go and create this table and we say pull out the latest values, which is like an aggregate in itself, for each individual key and store it as a table. So this is going to be really important because what we can then do is we can subsequently take all of the events as they arrive, like about a ship's movements, and enrich it with information about the ship itself. So you're kind of like taking that original stream of data, you're splitting it into different types and you're rejoining it, but using different semantics. Instead of just like a bunch of interlaced messages of different types, you're saying, well, take this and split it out and rejoin it using the semantics of a stream table join out to basically our lookup information, reference information, which is what our message type five events are modeled as a table in this ship info table. So this gives us the uh, message type one and message type five split out from that original stream. And so then conceptually, we have two different types of objects. We have a stream of events, ship movements, where it's going and oh, sorry, where it is at the moment, its speed, its direction, and that's going to change all the time. We have a table holding state about each individual ship that's reported it. So its name, its call sign, the type of ship that it is, its dimensions. And then we're going to take this table and use it as a lookup against all of the movement reports as they come in. So we're going to do a stream table join. We're going to bring these two uh, entities together. So the output of this is going to be an enriched stream of data 
which is going to take each individual position report as it arrives, enrich it with information about that ship using a left join, and output it onto a new stream. And these output streams are just Kafka topics, so I have a real-time feed of data updating all of the time. So let's prototype this first. We're not actually creating anything new here, we're just running a query. We're going to pull in everything from that original uh, status report stream, which is the message type 123. We've got the uh, join out to the ship info table, and we're doing that join on the common key between them, the MMSI, the ship's identifier. So we run that query, and we can see for uh, all of these different reports coming in, you've got information about its location, its status, and then also about the ship itself, like what's the actual name of it and its destination. Now, since that query has worked, we're going to prototype, we're going to, uh, the prototype has worked, sorry, so now we're actually going to create it into a stream itself. So we run that create stream statement, and that builds us a new stream. From here, we can then push that stream over into Elasticsearch. I'll show you how later on, but I want to give you an idea of what we can already do with the data at this point. So that data in Elasticsearch, we can put something like Kibana on top of it and actually start to visualize. Now, since the data is from the Norwegian Coastal Administration, you can see there's going to obviously going to be a cluster of the data around the coast of Norway. We can drill into the data. So we have ship type uh, gets reported as part of the AIS data. So you can then drill down into different types of ships. I'm just interested, for example, in looking at passenger ships. So now it just shows us data to do with passenger ships. We can look at the status over time. We can look at the speed of the different vessels and we can zoom in on a particular one. So we could say, I'm interested in this particular ship here. So we filter for that data. We can see the trend of its speed over time and its status over time. So has it been moored? Has it been uh, moving around? And you can see that the, whether it's been moored or not correlates with its speed. So as you would expect, when it's moored, it's not moving. Some of the time it's underway using engine, which is what's reported, but the, the speed is zero, so I guess it's maybe it's idling or something. But we can also zoom in on its particular coordinates that it's been reporting and see its track plotted onto a map. So we can really use this fascinating stream of data that started life as a TCP endpoint, just like with a bunch of gibberish that was being reported, piping it through GPS decode into a Kafka topic, a bit of stream processing to cleanse up that pipeline, to do a stream table join out to that lookup data that we're getting in the same stream, and then we push it into Elasticsearch. And I'll show you that stream into Elasticsearch later on. So being able to build out a dashboard using this stream of data is really useful. And it took us a couple of SQL statements to kind of cleanse that data and get it into the kind of form and denormalize it so we can build some reporting against it, some real-time reporting, all starting life as that single TCP endpoint that we were pulling the data from. But now I want to show you how you can use stream processing to do pattern matching against the data to look for evidence of something called transshipping. Now, transshipping is where you have one um, vessel drawing alongside another in order to exchange cargo. Now, usually this is for perfectly legitimate reasons. So fishing vessels offloading their catch onto a refrigerated cargo ship, which would then take it on into port. Sometimes, though, it's not actually legal what goes on, whether it's fish that shouldn't have been caught or it's uh, contraband that's been uh, offloaded between ships. And by actually identifying the patterns in the data, we can actually suggest in real time when this may be occurring. So Global Fishing Watch wrote this paper, uh, there's details about it uh, on the screen there to where to go and find it, and they describe the pattern that they use to match for transshipping behavior. So the way they describe it is we have a fishing vessel and a transshipment vessel alongside each other continuously at less than 500 meters, for at least two hours and it traveling at less than two knots. So this is how they define it. And I want to show you how you can use stream processing expressed using key SQL DB on a live stream of data flowing through Kafka, how we can actually implement this pattern match. So what we're gonna to do to start off with is we need to identify these transshipment vessels. The fishing vessels we already know because uh, as part of that message type 5 AIS data, there's a, a ship type field, so fishing vessels report as part of that. But Global Fishing Watch provide a, a CSV file which lists out a bunch of ships that they've identified using their own analysis that has transshipment vessels. 
So we take this CSV file and we push it into a Kafka topic. You can use Kafka Connect for this. I actually use Kafka Cat, just as a, a quick way of shoving the data into a topic. And you end up with a topic where you've got the key as the ship identifier and the value is the name of the ship. What we then do with this is we rebuild that ship info table that we had previously. So we actually join that original message type 5 data, which gave us that series of events which we built into state, and then we join that to the two uh, extra Kafka topics holding the data from Global Fishing Watch, which have got information about uh, ships that they've determined as transshipment vessels or reefers. Now, I should put a massive, massive uh, caveat on all of this stuff that I'm showing you here. Transshipment itself is perfectly legal. There's nothing wrong with transshipping. It's a completely accepted and uh, common practice. What is illegal is what uh, can transpire as part of transshipping, but ships listed here are not doing anything wrong. There's no suggestion that they are. It's purely what it could be used for uh, if done so nefariously. So we're going to build this table as before, built on the original event stream of message type 5 AIS messages, where ships report their attributes. We use latest by offset aggregation to pull in things like uh, the ship's destination. We can actually collect that into a set of destinations, so we build those up over time. We can also calculate things like the ship's dimensions based on the reported attributes. We're going to store that in the table also. And the information in this table is also going to include information about these transshipment vessels. So we join from those original message fives. We do a left join out to the two additional topics that we've populated using that data from Global Fishing Watch. And we use the case statement to set a couple of flags. So if we find a match, we set it to one. If we don't, we set it to zero. And we can use those flags later on in our processing. Now that we've built the table, we can start to actually build the stream processing queries to do this pattern matching. We're going to approach this pattern matching by breaking it down into two different parts. The first part of the puzzle is to identify all of our fishing vessels and our reefers and work out how close have they been. And if they're uh, less than 500 metres, and their speed is less than two knots, we're going to write those onto a new stream of data. So what we need to do is we need to compare all of the events that come in about a ship's movements. We need to work out was it a fishing vessel, was it a reefer, if it was, actually work out between those which ones were close to each other. And we're going to do this using a stream stream join in case equal db to basically do a Cartesian product, to do a join between the same stream. So we need to rebuild our original ship status report stream that did the uh, left join that we saw uh, previously where we do a join between the movements and the ship info table. So we pull in the data from um, that original event stream of the movement reports. We do a join to our updated table and uh, we build that out. You'll notice that we've added in a field called dummy and that's going to become important in the next bit. So this is our event stream of information about ship movements as they come in. We're going to create a copy of that stream. So select select star from ship status reports, but now with a predicate. Select only ship status reports if it's a transshipment or if it's a reefer vessel. Transshipment and reefer vessel, they're both kind of like the same thing. We're going to include those in that pattern match against fishing vessels. They just come from separate files, but the, the flags uh, count the same. So now we've got two streams. We've got from our original AAS source, all of the ship movements as they happen, but enriched with information about that vessel. We've got a clone of that stream that is only for reefer vessels, the ones we're gonna kind of match on and see if they're alongside any of the fishing vessels. So we're gonna create ourselves a stream in case equal DB that's gonna do a stream stream join. And you can see here, we're doing an inner join between those two streams, and then we set a window we say where it's within 10 minutes. So if you have, if you think of like, we've got this AIS stream of all these different ships reporting all of their different movements. If you have two events within 10 minutes of each other, they're gonna get included in this join. And we've got a bunch of predicates you can see there, which is actually gonna refine that join further. We say, if it's a fishing vessel, and it's not the same vessel, because we're doing a self join, so we don't want to pick that up, and the distance between them is less than a kilometer, we're gonna include them in this output. We include the fishing vessel and the reefer type. We use the geodistance function to actually work out the distance between them. And then we've got this case statement here, which is going to set a flag saying, does it match the condition? 
does they match the condition of the distance is less than 500 meters, less than half a kilometer, and the speed of both vessels is less than two knots, then we're gonna say the flag is set to, it's in range on speed, and we set that to true. So now this creates our stream stream join, and we go and run that query, and we get back a list of all of the different vessels that are close to each other and moving at less than two knots. So you can see here um, in the uh, topic list, we've actually built a new Kafka topic. The data lineage view again is quite useful and you can see what we've done here. We've taken that original ship status reports topic and we've split it into two. We've been able to say this um, ship status reports topic, we split it into uh, reefers reports and then the two join back in together in that stream stream join to give us this list of all the different vessels that are close enough together and moving slow enough together. So this, again, we can push it into Elasticsearch, we can visualize it like this, and we can see where ships happen to be uh, moving close to each other. But what we've not done yet is actually look at where they're close enough together and slow enough and for an extended period of time. The way we're going to do this is using a windowed aggregation and specifically a session window aggregation. Now a session window aggregation has got an indeterminate length. It's based on the timeout of the session, which is we can define ourselves. So we're basically saying, what is the period of time within which we need to receive events for that session still to be valid? So this comes down to kind of like the um, how precise you want to be about it and how frequently whatever it is you're tracking reports back an event. If you think of it in terms of a web page and people click on web pages, you may say if someone doesn't click on this web page within five minutes, then probably they've kind of left. They might come back later, but that'd be a different session. If it's less than five minutes, maybe they're just reading something, they had a quick chat with someone, then came back to it, that's still the same session. But the session timeout defines how long the session is. So in terms of the ships here, we're going to set a session timeout of 10 minutes, which is just like an arbitrary figure, which I came up with. So so long as the one or the other ship reports within 10 minutes, every 10 minutes or, or less, then the session will continue to be valid. So our session key is going to be based on the fishing vessel and the reef vessel identifier. And we can build out this aggregation, which is going to tell us how long is that session, because you've got a minimum and a maximum uh, report time. So you can see for each pair of vessels, how long were they together? So that's what this is going to show us here. We've got that session window there. And within the output, you see the fishing vessel name, you see the reefer name, you see the minimum time, the first time at which they reported. So 3.25 in the morning is that first one on the list, quarter past 12, uh, the second one on the list. The last time that they reported, the difference in seconds, because we can calculate that, the distance apart, their average speed, and all those kind of things. So you can see from that original list there, quite a few of them were basically just passing on by and never actually were together for that long at all. But the session aggregation gives us that ability to calculate how long were they nearby? And we can use that to then build out a table which is going to hold a list of reefers and fishing vessels closer for more than two hours. And it looks like this. So we say create the table, we're going to route it to a particular topic, and we're going to have a, um, a predicate on it which is going to say where they were in range and speed. So that was that previous case statement which said they've got to be less than 500 meters and moving at less than two knots. And then we've got a having predicate there, which is going to say they have to have been in that state within this session for more than two hours. Run that query and that builds us a table which holds all of the vessel instances that match our particular condition that we were looking to match. We've got vessels within 500 meters of each other, moving at less than two knots and for more than two hours. We're going to push this data, so the, the output of a table that we've built is a Kafka topic, and we're going to push that topic and the original status reports over into Elasticsearch. So again, using Confluent Cloud here to do that, it's a managed connector. Push the data over into Elasticsearch, I'm using Elastic Cloud, so this is all a nice managed cloud service, I don't have to worry about running any of it. When the connector is created, it starts shunting all of the data over into Elasticsearch, the nice thing with data lineage is it shows us those topics that we've been populating using KSQLDB and it shows us they're now being pushed over in a connector out into Elasticsearch in this case. 
If we head over to Elasticsearch, we can see that the indices have been created. And because that AIS stream continues producing messages and K SQL DB continues processing, it's all stream processing, you can see the numbers in those indices going up. So let's take that data in Elasticsearch and visualize it using Kibana. The map feature lets us plot on the individual status reports of individual vessels, and it also lets us take a vessel name to use as a key and then plot the track of that particular vessel on the map, which is rather nice. So let's visualize what's gone on with this data that we've detected using KSQL DB. So we've got a live stream of data. We've KSQL DB to write a windowed aggregation to spot when these fishing vessels are close to reefers and not moving and all the rest of it. We can see there's a cluster of these reports at this point here, this red dot on the map. So as we zoom into that, we get to see more detail all from that AIS data. You can see the reefers moving around the coastline. As we zoom in some more, we can see that we've got reports from the fishing vessels. As we go in even more detail into that red dot in the center there, you can see quite what has happened here. Now, I'm gonna spoil the surprise. What's happened is entirely correct. We've built out a pattern to match the bit of the pattern that we wanted to. But I was slightly uh, cheeky in the bit of the pattern that I decided to match because I deliberately omitted part of the original specification in what Global Fishing Watch defined. They said a fishing vessel and a reefer within 500 meters of each other, less than two knots for more than two hours, and not in a coastal anchorage, not in a port. But if you look closely at the map here, you can see that's exactly what has happened. So we've got fishing vessels, we've got reefers, the speed of each of them is zero, the distance between them is less than 500 meters, it's just across the bay there. So we've matched that part of the pattern, but in another iteration of this, if you join me in the next episode, you'll see how we'd need to take in uh, coordinates of all the dis different ports, and then add that into our pattern matching to exclude those so that we don't get false positives. So let's recap what we've actually built out here. We've built out a stream of AIS data, in our case being picked up from a TC endpoint, but it could also be coming from actual AIS receiver. We've pushed it into a Kafka topic. We've used KSQL DB to split that single stream of AIS message types into the individual topics based on message type. We built a table, a lookup table of state because one of those message types, the message type fives, actually told us the attributes about a ship. So we collected that into a table. We did a stream table join, so that every single movement that came in, we could denormalize out and add in information about those particular vessels. And we pushed that into Elasticsearch and built a fancy dashboard. Then we said, well, let's take this and let's apply some pattern matching to it. We did a stream stream join to say for every single movement that comes in, join it to every other single movement that happened within a 10 minute window. And 10 minutes was kind of just an arbitrary point to join between. Check if it was a fishing vessel and a reefer vessel. And if it was, work out the distance between them. Look at their speed. And if it was less than two knots and the distance was less than 500 meters, capture that onto a new stream. That was the first part of a pattern match. And then we said, of that stream of possible matches, build a windowed aggregation. We used a session window to say, how long have these things been together? So let me get a, a ping from one or the other within a 10 minute period. And again, 10 minutes is just a, an arbitrary time that we set. So long as we get a ping from one or the other, uh, every 10 minutes or less, then that session stays valid. And we measured the length of that session. And we had a predicate to say, well, it still has to be within range and uh, less than two knots and so on. And we measured the length of that session. If it was more than two hours, we wrote that onto a Kafka topic, which is what we then used to drive that visualization there. It doesn't just have to drive a visualization. That Kafka topic could also be used to drive a service, which actually goes and pings the authorities and says, are these ships allowed to be doing this? Did we know they were doing that? And if they were, then that's great. If we didn't, maybe we should go and, go and investigate a little bit further. So I do hope that's been interesting. I do hope that's been a, a useful real world example of how we can use stream processing to uh, detect patterns in data, to build out pipelines, to do really interesting things with real data. So if you'd like to learn more about Apache Kafka and Confluent, head over to Confluent Developer. There's tons and tons of excellent resources there for you to learn from. And with that, thank you very much for your time. 
do follow me on Twitter, do subscribe to my YouTube channel, and please do enjoy the rest of the conference.